When I was a kid, potty talk was strictly off limits. If I said number one or number two, there better be a math problem involved. But I finally found a poo you can talk about, and that's dinosaur poo, coprolites. The term was coined by the Reverend William Buckland. In 1829, he called fossils he found on the British shore coprolites. He thought they came from an ichthyosaur. That's a prehistoric marine reptile that lived 90 million years ago. So he took them to a chemist and had them analyzed. And sure enough, that's exactly what the stones were. Buckland became obsessed. He thought about dinosaur poop nonstop. And his friends in the scientific community, and I paraphrase here, said, dude, you sure you want to be known as the poop guy? Buckland said, yeah. And he wasn't the only one studying. In North America, Edward Hitchcock was studying dinosaur poo too. He had found prehistoric trackways. That means the feet of the dinosaurs pressed into ancient stone. He didn't know they were dinosaurs. He thought they were prehistoric birds. And he found stones near the tracks. And he wondered if they might be poo. So he took them to a chemist. And the chemist did analysis and found they contained phosphate. If there's phosphate in these prehistoric stones, they probably are dinosaur poo. Now, back in England, they discovered the phosphate connection as well. And by 1909, hundreds of tons of these coprolites had been ground into powder and used as fertilizer for the phosphate. In the British town of Ipswich, the coprolite industry was so major that they have a street named Coprolite Street. The queen of dinosaur poo now is Dr. Karen Chen. She works at the University of Colorado Boulder, and she studies coprolites for a living. The coprolite she studied most recently is the size of a basketball. She says they come in every shape and size. They even come in jewelry. Who knew you could wear poo and get away with it?